After the Taliban took hold of Kabul, residents are now desperate to flee Afghanistan's beleaguered capital. A mass exodus is underway in Kabul and amid all this chaos and mayhem at the airport, five people have lost their lives and the reason has not been ascertained yet, but the reports came after the U.S. Army fired to keep the crowds at bay. The Karzai International Airport. Authorities have now announced the suspension of all commercial flights. The closure of the Kabul airspace also means that Indian flights will no longer be able to operate. Through the statement, airport authorities have called on the people to avoid crowding the airport. Amid the chaos, the U.S. troops fired shots into the air at Kabul airport today morning and after the Taliban takeover of the country and fall of Afghanistan's government, thousands of Afghans crowded onto the tarmac in the hope of catching a flight out of the war-torn country. Scores of Afghans crowded the Kabul International Airport. There were some scuffles among people who were unable to get a place as departures were stopped. Another eyewitness video showed people shouting inside an Istanbul-bound flight that reportedly could not take off. Urging Taliban to allow Afghans and other nationals to leave the country, more than 60 nations have issued a joint statement saying... Afghans and international citizens who want to leave Afghanistan must be allowed to depart. The U.S. State Department added that airports and border crossings must remain open. It also added that those in positions of power and authority across Afghanistan bear the responsibility and accountability. For the protection of human life and property and for the immediate restoration of security and civil order. The Afghan people deserve to live in safety, security and dignity, said the statement. The joint statement has been signed by countries including Australia, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the Republic of Korea, Qatar and the United Kingdom. The U.S. Embassy in Kabul suspended operations and warned Americans to shelter in place and not try to get to the airport. And according to a State Department official, almost all U.S. Embassy personnel have now relocated to a facility at the Hamid Karzai International Airport. The U.S. has also secured Kabul's international airport to enable the safe departure of thousands by civilian and military flights. Several hundred employees of the U.S. Embassy in Kabul have already been evacuated from Afghanistan. Accelerating evacuation efforts, the United States has sent 6,000 troops to the airport to fly out embassy personnel as well as Afghan interpreters. Also part of the departure plan are thousands of Afghans eligible for U.S. special immigrant visas the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has played down America's hasty exit as he still calls it a successful mission. Let's take a step back. This is manifestly not Saigon. We're uh, working uh, to make sure that uh, our uh, personnel are safe and secure. Uh, we're relocating um, uh, the men and women of our embassy uh, to a location at the airport. Uh, it's why the president sent in uh, a number of forces to make sure that as we continue to draw down our diplomatic presence, we do it in a safe uh, and orderly fashion. UK troops have also arrived in Kabul to aid British nationals and diplomats still in the country. In all times, um, we don't know where they're all coming from. Okay, okay. Good. Yeah, yeah, European nations and the EU are also scrambling to evacuate their citizens and local staff from Kabul. In a tweet, the French ambassador to Afghanistan, David Martineau, showed himself in a helicopter leaving the heavily fortified green zone. France will also begin to airlift its citizens from Kabul by tonight itself. French citizens will be evacuated to a base in the United Arab Emirates. 
Germany has also shut down its embassy in Kabul and it's now preparing to send military transport planes to evacuate as many Germans and local Afghan helpers as possible. People have appealed to the German Chancellor Angela Merkel and Foreign Minister for an emergency visa program to help local staff who worked for them to leave Afghanistan. As part of efforts to evacuate citizens of New Zealand, their government is sending a C-130 Hercules military transport plane to Afghanistan for 53 New Zealanders. And defence officials have said that they plan for a month-long mission involving at least 40 military personnel tasked with servicing and protecting the plane. In relation to Afghan nationals seeking to come to New Zealand, Cabinet has confirmed that we will continue to make every effort to support the repatriation of New Zealand citizens and permanent residents and immediate family members travelling with them and their dependents. For more perspective about the ongoing developments in Afghanistan, joining us now is regional analyst Faria Saidi, and she joins us now from Toronto. Thank you so much for joining us. My first question to you, we've seen Plenty of scenes of chaos and panic this morning at the Kabul airport. Citizens trying to flee Afghanistan. U.S. allies requesting Taliban to let the Afghans leave the country. What is your analysis of the on-ground situation? Hi, thank you very much for having me. Um, unfortunately, we're now in Afghanistan. A dark history is repeating. Um, we see a chaos everywhere. Fear, chaos, it's everywhere with everyone. And um, right now, uh, people are trying, as you said, the airport is a chaos. I believe the airport is closed down right now. No one is able to uh, go anywhere. Um, the U.S. military is using it to evacuate their staff. But at the same time, as we just heard the news this morning, um, there was fight happening. There's no one actually to um, secure the airport. There are no... Uh, military from Afghanistan and we also don't have anyone from um, any security forces there um, the Taliban uh, members are not there to you know, secure the airport so um, there was a fight I think happened in the morning and um, what happened was um, the US military uh, troops shot and 10 people 10 Afghans were killed um, as a result um, that's what happening it is a fear everywhere and um, people are trying to get out but I think that's uh, not happening at this very moment Right now, we've seen the developments in Afghanistan in the last few weeks, but the scenes that have unfolded in the last two days have shocked the world. The president, Ashraf Ghani, has fled. People are asking to leave the country. The Taliban, of course, have captured the capital. How do you view the future of women and children in Afghanistan as of now? Mm -hmm. Well, uh... I want to say that everybody knows that uh, what happened in the 90s when Taliban were in power. We saw no future for women. There was no future for women. There was no present for women at that time. And um, no children as well. There was no education for anyone. Um, no success, no development in Afghanistan. And what happened as if things were getting security situation was getting worse in um, the past few years and then everyone afghans around the world we all came together and we raised our voice and we brought up our concerns we were we want everyone the international community look around and see what's happening in afghanistan this is not a stability this is not going towards peace there is no such a thing as a peace talk this is not going to work out it's just going to bring more chaos uh, at that time nobody heard us and here we are right now and at the 12th hour everyone's going to what's going to happen to afghanistan afghanistan is going to fall and it did and it did um, it was uh, the president left completely yesterday. Um, he did have a correct, uh, um, you know, administration. Um, that's uh, for sure. But uh, at the same time, uh, there was no support. The international community uh, just turned their back on in Afghanistan. And now, who's going to pay the cost? We have 36 million people um, in Afghanistan and only 7 million people in Kabul a lot. Everyone's going to pay the cost for that. As far as women and children go, there is no future for women and children already. Um, before Taliban, they, they only announced they were coming in Kabul. Uh, we saw that um, everything changed completely. Women, some of them were discussing that they're not even going to go um, to their jobs anymore. Uh, places that had women, posters of women were painted on it on black and white so no one can see the faces. This has already started and it began, and we want the word about it. Everyone, every Afghan that I know, we went on social media, we started telling them to please target what exactly is the issue here. We even told them to stop supporting uh, stop supporting the terrorists, to stop supporting Taliban. It's going to cause more chaos for Afghanistan, and it did. Nobody heard our voice at that time, and here we are right now. And I, I don't think it's 
too late as we could have still do something as the international community could have still offered their help right. and help Africa. And we went on saying that, you know, put on a sanction on Pakistan. They are due. They are supporting Taliban openly. They keep sending their soldiers from uh, Pakistan to fight in Afghanistan. Afghans are paying for a war that's not theirs. And here we are right now. We're going back to 20 years ago uh, and more chaos, more lives. And it's all only for Afghans that are paying it. Right. Faria, you raised some very important points about the role played by regional players in all of this. Let's talk about the role of the United States. Do you think this was a hasty exit? Did they plan a good exit strategy? And did they see this coming? Absolutely. It was a failed strategy. Yes, they had to leave. It's understandable. And I think everyone said it too. We respect the choice that you have to leave. You're not going to stay there forever. But when you leave after 20 years, that's not how you leave. That's not how it works. You have a plan. You have a plan that actually works, not a failed plan. This plan was failed to begin with. When Donald Trump started this whole peace process negotiations back in 2019, it was only to get his uh, to get votes for himself. It was more a domestic decision. And then Biden followed with the same decision but what happened was that it caused it wasn't stable at all and they saw that in the beginning Taliban were not ready to negotiate they had problems with women being in the negotiations those were all signs of warning but they kept pushing on this peace negotiations to the point where they came to this power sharing story but here we are right now there is no power sharing there is no power there's not even anybody in control right now it's just talking to people and they're like uh, there's nobody in security nobody knows what's going on no one has is in charge of anything basically you you just see a bunch of people in cars with weapons in their hands from the Taliban member. That's it. Everybody's lost. I'm certain enough. We don't know what's happening next. Faria, thank you so much for all those strong points that you've raised. And thank you for joining us on Beyond at this hour. Thank you for having me. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.